What's up guys? I got a new Cobra bag the other day. I've been super excited about this because if you have not seen Canelo and Ryan Garcia work the Cobra bag, it looks phenomenal and it looks like so much fun. Now initially I was going to do a video and show you guys after two or three weeks after I've got really good at it, what I've learned how to use it. But I went, you know what? I want to do a first impressions video. Plus my wife has just been having so much fun getting back into being active after being in a car accident. So it's just so fun for her because she's getting to use the bag as well and just learn and challenge herself because it's hard, right? Yeah, it's a good workout. It's a good workout. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you what it looks like as a professional getting on this for the first time. I'm still struggling with it, but I'm gonna show you the basics of what I'm doing to start getting better and better and what I've sort of formulated works best to develop your skills as quick as possible. And I have no idea what I'm doing, so that'll be amusing. So <laughs> intro first, guys, then you can watch Rach and I on the Cobra bag, and I can show you what I'm working on, and if you decide to get your own Cobra bag, what you can do to train and get better so much faster. So first, I wanna take you through this Hayabusa bag and just talk about putting it all together. It comes with a water base. The water base, the whole thing was super light. You just fill it up when you get home. These screws just get attached in, and then from there, you work your way up. There's one little pull here before you hit this cord, this wire, and then another one here. The bottom pipe is adjustable, so you can put it at whatever height is best. And then from here, this is not necessary, this just covers the screws that are in the way. And then from there we have basically an upside down speed bag. Now the reason I like this, the reason it's so challenging, is a lot of times when you hit a punching bag, it's just stationary. You hit away and it doesn't move. So there's no real reaction timing. But on this one, when you hit, it goes, comes back. You either have to decide I'm gonna hit it now or you have to let it come towards you, and then a second time, hit it there. So I'm finding it very difficult, especially off a hook. When I throw the hook, it moves sideways, and then you have to really work on throwing a punch and not letting it miss. So before Rach takes her turn on the bag, showing you what it's like as a beginner on a Cobra bag, a beginner striker, I'm gonna take you through and show you what I've learned so far as a professional fighter on the Cobra bag for the first time. And I found right away, when you see videos of Canelo and Ryan Garcia hitting it, they're just smashing it one hand to the next and I'm going, well, I wanna do that. But I realized very quickly that's not realistic because I haven't figured out the timing of this. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the drills that I've been working, which have started giving me the opportunity to not feel like an absolute noob on this bag. So the first one that I've been doing is throwing five jabs in a row, just peppering nonstop, just trying to understand the timing and just catching it as it comes back. One, two, three, four, five. And then I just let it rest. And again, it can come in. One, two, now off the jab, it's not that hard, it's fairly easy. Going off the cross is a little bit more difficult because we have to be a little faster than I'm used to, but also I've been finding that very often if I hit the, the bag straight on, or what I think is straight on, it'll actually go a little bit sideways. And that means the bag doesn't spring back and forth correctly, so it's really helping me make sure my technique is perfect. So off the cross, after I've got the jab down, then one, two, three, four, five. Now that's a good entry level drill to start. Just one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And just working away, trying to understand just the timing. Now once we've accomplished that, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get doubles or triples alternating arms. And I have to make sure very quickly that I'm coming straight and straight. One, two. And what you'll learn about this bag very quickly is it pops back. If you just throw your shots, and stay here, it's gonna smoke you. And it's not soft. If it hits you in the nose, you are gonna get definitely hurt. So you have to learn how to utilize a little shoulder roll or a little fade back, which is perfect for those guys who like to utilize that or are wanting to learn. So when I throw my jab cross, I turn and use my shoulder as protection. And from there, I can just work away, throw my shots as normal. Then when it stabilizes, I come back in, one, two, and I just get that shoulder roll, or I do my fade back. One, two. Just like we talked about before, hold a single cross. Getting the straight punches down first, 
seems to be the key because once I start adding an uppercuts and hooks too early, it just becomes far too complex. So trying to get single shot, single shot, and just have the ability to keep the bag going straight back and forth, adding in little fade backs, maybe putting a couple punches together. This allows me to feel like I'm making some progress. So one, two, three, four, five. those little fades. And if I started going too far above that, start adding hooks and uppercuts, far too difficult. So that is your beginner point. Straight punches, being able to put combos together after you work, just single shots on one arm. Before I go in and I start talking about how to incorporate the hooks and the uppercuts, which make everything so much more difficult, I'm gonna bring Rachel on. She's gonna practice hitting the bag and just give you her take as a beginner on what she's learned so far, little ways to have fun. All right, so full disclosure, this is the second time I've done this, so don't expect much. And I haven't done pads in about a year and a half, so uber beginner right here. But it's a really sweet workout so far after only, what, like a day of having it. I really like about it is actually it kind of forces me to keep my hands up and I like doing elbows. So Rach doesn't want to get hit <laughs> in the face so she's going to be extra cautious about keeping her hands up and that's something that's really good for beginners. This bag will help you very quickly learn to keep your hands high. But I have no idea how to do like a Yeah I'll get into the terrible. I'll get into the hooks <laughs> and uppercuts after you can watch and actually learn the things that I've sort of picked up in the last 24 hours. So you go for it. Give it a little smack. What see you, what, what you can do. do. Just play around. It's really gonna burning my shoulder down. <laughs> <laughs> so for a workout for girls, it's kind of awesome. So let's get your opinion for a second. Take a little pause. Compared to a heavy bag, which I know sometimes you find aggravates your shoulders a little Spray bit. Fun. Do you enjoy this more? Would you rate this higher? Yeah. I am. Um, I mean, you can't kick on it. I like the heavy bags just for kicking, mainly. Oh, well, I guess you could kick on this, but. I haven't really been able to hit. Yeah. So I feel like doing this, it's actually less impact on me. Yeah. Which is important for me right now. So it seems like it feels like a lot less impact on my ribs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, which is nice if you guys are getting tired of hitting a heavy, heavy bag, which hurts you, hurts your hands. This one has a lot of give. Yeah, I like it. So now guys, I'm gonna teach you and Rachel how to throw the hooks and uppercuts of what I've learned over the last little bit, because like I said, when I started off, I just wanted to go freestyle. I just wanted to freestyle and hit it every time, but you learn very quickly, you're gonna miss a lot of the shots if you don't understand the timing. So starting off, with the hooks. I found the easiest way to get good or to get an understanding of what happens when it moves sideways instead of forwards and back is to throw a hook and just keep throwing hooks. Try and get 10 in a row. Don't worry about throwing anything else. And when I hit it, it's gonna spring and spring and spring. And right here, this is when I'm gonna try and hit it again. And this is just getting the timing down in your head. So even after 24 hours, I went from hardly being able to throw hooks to now being able to do this. And I know that doesn't look like really hard. If you're just watching here, you're just going, oh, he's just throwing hooks. But the timing has to almost be perfect. One second too early, one second too late, not even a second. We're talking like a quarter of a second and it doesn't angle back the right way and then you lose it. And it also makes you be precise. Makes you be very precise with your timing, exactly. You have to just be ready to hit and then when it gets right to there, then you have to go, okay, it's there now and then boom, again. There's no time for you overthinking it. And if you overthink it a little bit, you're like, oh, I can't, I'm gonna go. By the time you think, it's already stopped moving. So you really only have a split second. Hit, 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 hit. It's funny, it almost like makes you have to do your techniques better. It does, it keeps your techniques very sharp. If you're sloppy with your techniques, the bag moves funny and you notice right away. So for the hooks, that's what I started with. And then I started going, okay, well now I have the hooks down. Now I need to get good at hitting with a straight shot and then coming with the hook after. And then from there I can follow up with more hooks after. So I come one and then to two. And then from there again I can slap, 
slap, or what I can do, what a lot of the guys do, is I go one, and then two, and then I just angle off to that point where now the bag is moving straight forward and back. If you're in front of it, as it does that, it's really easy to pick it back up. But if I hit it hard, and then I go here, now it's much harder to find that timing. So, so far we've talked about the straight punches, we've talked about how to start incorporating the hooks. The uppercuts are the next difficult one because you cannot hit them or hit the bag when the bag is stationary. For me, I find that from here, an uppercut makes no sense. So I have to use it as a follow-up technique. So the way I've been doing it is I go straight punch, I let it rock forward, backward, forward, and then I go to my uppercut. That's been the way that I've started. I have one, two. And then from there, I can keep going on the uppercuts if I want, but I need that initial straight punch to get it started. One, two, two. And I can just work the way there, and then if I want, I can go back to the straight punches. Now the other way that you can utilize it is you can get going really fast. Instead of letting it go back and forward and back and forward before you hit it, you can just go really rapid. I hit it once. But what I'm trying to do is just fire that arm up. Go timing in between, or and then go back to normal. I found personally that taking time to learn the single techniques through the same technique over and over and over has helped me a lot. Because when I first started, I was missing so much. I'd just be like, hit, miss, miss. Miss. I'll give you guys a demo right now, show you where I'm at after 24 hours with this bag. Probably spent half an hour, 40 minutes in total on it. So I'll give you guys a quick demo, trying to remember to move, and you guys can see where I am, and then hopefully in two weeks when I do my follow-up video, talking more about what I've learned, I'll be able to show you guys an increase in my skills. All right, here we go. I don't incorporate hooks, it's much easier. Much easier. Yeah, hooks are really hard. The hooks are the hard part. Yeah. It starts going there, I yeah. can either center up, or I can really try and land those multiple hooks like we talked about. Hit, hit. that one down and then hook into the straight punch. Being able to land that is one of the harder ones right now. After 24 hours of you know, having time to sporadically come in and work on it, that's as far as I've made on the Cobra bag. Like I said guys, expect a follow up episode I think I'll do two weeks time. So I've had a decent amount of time to sort of hone my skills. I found when I did a speed bag for the first time, I really struggled. Three weeks later, no problem. So hopefully my progression will be just as fast with the Cobra bag and I'll have lots of new drills, new tips for you if you decide you want to get your own. All right guys, that's all from me today. Thank you for joining. If you haven't already, give the video a like. Of course, get subscribed. Train hard guys. I'll see you back here soon for another video.